There is a key to receiving the blessings of God, and it's one word, it's obedience. When we obey, God blesses. And this week, as we talk about the Feast of the Lord, as we talk about the Sabbath and Jubilee year, and when we talk about God's blessings for obedience, you will see that God is a God who loves us. And even in our disobedience, He is looking for ways to bless us because when He makes a covenant with people, He's a God who keeps His covenant to a thousand generations. Tune in today. I know you're going to be blessed. Welcome to another Portions podcast. I'm super excited about today because we're finishing up the book of Leviticus. I'm blown away that we're already through the end of the book of Leviticus. And this week, we're actually going to pick up where we left off last week, talking about the feasts. We're going to jump into the year of Jubilee. We're going to be talking about how the Lord desires to bless us when we're obedient. And I couldn't do this without my buddy, Nathan Smith. Thank you again, yes, God. Thank bro, you, for being man. here. I'm just, uh, I know last week was seven days ago, yeah. but I i mean, it's as if it was just a moment Think ago. about that. <laughs> Think about that. And I'm, I'm, I'm still like so blessed, dude. We talked about the priesthood in a way that, uh, I mean, it was simple, but yet it really inspired me. And I'm so glad we get to pick up just yeah. To finish off last week's podcast, because we were going to talk about the feast, we just ran out of time. But there's something so significant about Leviticus 23. We started touching on it at the end of last week when you mentioned and highlighted that the Lord says these were his feasts. Specifically yeah. in verse 2 of Le Leviticus 23, it says, Spe this is God speaking to Moses. Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, the Lord's appointed times, which you shall proclaim as holy convocations, my appointed yes. times. Listen, when God makes an appointment with us, you don't want to be late right. and you definitely don't want to blow him off. Right, Dude, I'm just remembering, I made a lunch appointment with a friend of mine. He's a leader of Messianic congregation here in the city. I said, dude, I'll meet you. He was there waiting for me. And he never texted me and said, Scott, where are you? He, he never did it. About a week later, I'm thinking to myself, I'm supposed to have lunch with this guy. And I look back <laughs> and I totally missed it. Sure. Totally missed it. You know how gracious he was to me? Scott, don't worry about it. I totally understand. Let's, let's reschedule. We rescheduled. I missed it oh. a second time. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was, comedy, I'm, I'm still mortified <laughs> about it. This was years ago. He was such a gracious oh, man. We ended up having lunch. I didn't, at three strikes are out. No, I didn't, yeah, I didn't yeah. miss it. I love how gracious he was yeah. in me missing his appointments. Wow. But here's the deal. Here's what really bummed me out. He was there waiting for me. He was there. And I did not show up. I did not show up. So let's just talk really, really briefly about these appointed times where God says he's He's waiting for us. Yeah. He He's making an appointment with us, not so much so that he can be blessed, although he is, yeah. but there's a blessing in these appointments for us. Yeah. I missed out twice yeah. with my dear friend. And let me just tell you something, that third time when I made it there, I loved how gracious he was to me and nice. didn't make me feel like, oh, you low life. Yeah. You know, I'm never going to meet with you again. I believe, bro, that many of us in our lives have missed these appointments for every year that we've been alive. Absolutely. But there is a way right now where God is just saying, okay, come, uh, I've set the table for yeah. you. So let's just talk about these feasts yeah. in Leviticus chapter 23. The first, Well, there's, there's the Passover, first fruit, Shavuot trumpets, mm -hmm. uh, Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles. Yep. So let's just really, really briefly yeah. talk about them. Yeah. The first, they're actually feasts that are in the spring. Yes. And then there are feasts that are in the fall. The first three feasts that we talk about here, actually it talks about the Sabbath first, right. um, but then it talks about three feasts, Passover, first fruits, mm -hmm. and the feast of Shavuot. You shall count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath, Shavuot. 
50, which is really the Feast of Pentecost. Right. Amazing. So can you just briefly pass over first fruits, mm -hmm. Pentecost? These three feasts happen within a natural period of 50 days. Yeah. So can you just talk about those 50 days really, really yeah. quickly and what they mean for us? Yes. Yeah, so we remember the Exodus, mm -hmm. right? So they're coming out of Egypt. God says to Moses, through Moses to Pharaoh, let my people go that they may worship me. That yeah. was the reason. So we have the Passover, the, the, the death angel, right? Blood of the lamb on the doorposts. That's commemorated every year. At that same time, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. right? We talked about this before. Yeah. You know, all the leaven, all it, the, the houses are clean, the kitchens are clean. Yeah. Then right after that, we get first fruits, which we see as those who believe in Jesus as Yeshua the Messiah. He fulfills all three of these. He dies on Passover. His body is broken, the unleavened bread yeah. without sin. Yeah. And then he raises to life on the Feast of First Fruits. Yes, he does. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 15, he's the first fruits from the grave, right. firstborn of the dead. Right. And so that happens in the spring. And there's an agricultural element to these things. You have the counting of the Omar, right? Preparing for um, Shavuot for Pentecost. And in those 50 days, uh, there the the harvest is starting to come into the spring. And then there it, it's presented before the Lord, right? Yes. Um, and so in the spring, those things are happening. Well, then in the fall, we have... The Feast of Trumpets. Yep. You have the you have the Day of Atonement. Right. You have the Feast of Tabernacles. Yep. We have this gap in between. Yep. And many will point to, well, if you look at this as the biblical worldview, yeah. Jesus fulfilled the spring feasts. There's this season on the earth. Yeah. Is he going to fulfill the fall feasts? I believe he will. Believe he is. And yeah. uh, because he keeps his appointments. That's what I believe. I, I love that. When you know you talked about uh, Passover, you talked about first fruits, you alluded to Shavuot. Isn't it interesting? that there are three feasts that every Jewish man is required to be at. Jesus himself right. through his entire life was there. So the Feast of Shavuot, which is Pentecost, it's really, really interesting because all of these Jewish people made their way back to Jerusalem exactly 50 days after Passover, exactly 50 days after Jesus dies on the cross. So as these first fruits are coming and 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 they're getting ready to present their Pentecost offering. Yes. God shows up in the Old Testament. The Jewish people believe that it was on the Feast of Pentecost that they were given the law yes. on Mount Sinai 50 yes. days after the Passover. Right. 50 days after Jesus dies, they're given the spirit yep. in the upper room and the gospel explodes. You talked about this season between spring and fall, which is really, really amazing and probably the season that we find ourselves in now. And these last days are coming where Jesus is going to return on the Feast of Trumpets. Yep. You know, the dead in Christ will rise. The nations will be judged on the Day of Atonement. The judgment will happen. And then tabernacles. Let's just talk about tabernacles for one second, yeah, if you exciting. don't mind. So the Feast of Tabernacles in the Old mm -hmm. Testament, just allude to what that meant for the children of Israel. Yeah, so sometimes it's called the Feast of Booths. Right. Because they were they were commanded to construct a sukkah, right? Right. And it, it's a booth. It's a if you've if you've even looked at pictures online, you can see during the Feast of Tabernacles to this day yeah. in Israel, they will construct little dwellings, yep. some even on their apartment balconies, right? right. It's amazing. Right. Where they would eat a meal and it was supposed to commemorate God being with them in the wilderness as they're journeying, because he said he would tabernacle among them right. and be with them. Right. And so it's a picture of God's presence. And then they bring the har the full harvest comes in. Yes. Right? During tabernacles. Uh, they have certain fruits they're supposed to inspect. To, 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 it all it's all representative of God's faithfulness and His provision. Yeah. And then it's the most joyous occasion on the entire Jewish calendar. Yeah. The Hebrew calendar, you, you cannot get more excited. It's not more joyous than the Feast of Tabernacles. I love it. And the idea being for us to remember that there is an end time harvest that will come in. Come on. And there's coming a time when God will tabernacle among us. Yep. Book of John in the New Testament tells yep. us that Jesus, chapter 1, verse 14, came and tabernacled among us. Amazing. Then it lets us know that in the end of days, when he makes all things new, yeah. 
The kingdoms of the earth will become the kingdoms of God and they'll come together and he will tabernacle among Isn't us that amazing? from Jerusalem here on the earth and the renewed earth. The culmination of the ages. Listen to this verse in Zechariah 14, verse 16. The title is God will be king over all. This is a future, future picture. Listen to this. Then it will come about that any who are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and celebrate the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Messianic kingdom, in the millennium, the Feast of Tabernacles, which God instituted 3,500 years ago to remind people that he is with them, we're gonna celebrate at the end of the age. And then just one more verse that came to me as you were speaking, Revelations 21, verse three. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. He will dwell among them. They shall be his people and God himself will be among them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no longer any death. There will be no longer any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away and he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. God decided 3,500 years ago in Leviticus 23, yeah. something that was going to happen not only then, yeah. but when Jesus came and Jesus fulfilled it and when it's ultimately fulfilled at the end of the age when he will wipe every tear from our eye. Just as I'm saying this, I'm reminded of the fact that we still cry we still we, yeah. we still have pain, but when God tabernacles with us, everything changes because we don't weep like those without hope. And God says that one day there will be a day when he will wipe every tear out of our eyes. That's what the Feast of Tabernacles is. That's what happens when God comes and he dwells among man. Remarkable, Nathan, in this uh, 23rd chapter yeah. of Leviticus, how God gives a picture of kind of his whole end time plan. It's so true. And Scott, I want to highlight, you know, people that this would be new for them or the Old Testament, the Tanakh can feel a little bit, I don't really know how to approach it if they, yeah. if they aren't familiar with some of these things. The reason it's so important is because think about this. We just talked about how in the New Testament, Pentecost was fulfilled. Why? Because the Jewish people were being obedient yeah. to keep the appointment. I love it. The reason there were Jewish people from all the nations speaking different languages yeah. is because they had been obedient right. to show up for the appointment at, at Shavuot. I love it. And when they do, they hear the good news and then they go back home and become the first missionaries yeah. to spread the good news. Why is that important? As we try to figure this out as how do we observe these feasts even today, one, I would just say start with paying attention to the calendar. Yeah. Just care. You start just there. Care. Just care at all. Mm -hmm. And then say, okay, Lord, how, how can I honor this in a way that I'm keeping your appointment without trying to be legalistic or trying to prove a point? I just want to honor that this is, these are your appointments, God. Yeah. I want to show up. The people in the, in the book of Acts did, and as a result, the gospel went to the nation. I love it. Obedience is really, really the key. That's the key. Let's say, Lord, what would you have for me to do where yeah. these feasts our concern and and remove the the burdensome part of it yeah. and remember that we're remembering God and there should be nothing burdensome about yeah. that whatsoever yeah. whatsoever yeah. so that's Leviticus 23 our actually the the portion that is being read this week starts in Leviticus 25 and goes through the end of the book of Leviticus but in Leviticus chapter 25 there's this thing called the sabbatical year and the year of jubilee man we hear that all the time the year of jubilee <laughs> yeah. tell us a little bit about the year of jubilee yeah so similar with what we see in the book of uh what we see in pentecost yep um the feast of shavuot you've got 50 days after well in the sabbath year so there's a sabbath the greatest of the feasts is the sabbath right. actually right? It's right every week every week um but uh, in the in the cycle, you've got seven years, and then God would call um, a a time of rest. So then, every seven sevens, right? You get what's called the sabbatical year, the Sabbath year, or the shemitah. Right? Mm -hmm. The shemitah jubilee. It's when God says, "Okay, 
not only do we rest every seven, we're going to actually stop everything for an entire year. Mm. No planting, no making money. I want you to set this time. So you have to prepare for it. Wow. And you also have to trust God implicitly. And it's a sign to the nations. Mm. Because Scott, if you know, if I come to you and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm taking a year off. I'm like, why? Well, because I want to honor the Lord. Mm. Well, how are you going to pay your bills? He said, well, we've made preparation and we're trusting the Lord. Mm. That would be a sign and a wonder for me to observe. Watch how he, he fulfills and his promise. And look how God takes care of his people. Yeah. So this, again, is a sign to the nations. God's using Israel. Well, in doing so, um, they, have to tr- they have to trust the Lord. And God took it very, very serious because he wants them to be a sign and a wonder to the nations Mm. that you can trust me. I will take care of you. One of the reasons God does this, and we see this in Leviticus 25, is that he wants to make sure that no one is stuck in a cycle of poverty. No one is stuck in a cycle of bondage. He's the God of freedom. Mm. We even see uh, in Leviticus 25, verse 17, do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord your God. Mm. And then he explains, not only do I want you to take this sabbatical year, the Shemitah, if you try to calculate and figure out how much you're gonna sell your house for, knowing that next year's the Shemitah uh, and all property reverts back to its original wow. owner. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, don't manipulate the system. Nice. He says it throughout, why? Because his heart is for freedom. Mm. He wants us to be at rest. The Sabbath is about rest, but it's also about the restoration of relationship. You and God, you and your neighbor, right? Amazing. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbors yourself. Yeah. The, the Sabbath year, same idea. I love Let's it. Let's restore relationship. Let's, let's reset things. This is the heart of our God. It's the heart of our God. And, you know, we look today at some organizations in the world that are actually observing the Sabbath closed on Sunday. And, and people are going to argue whether the Sabbath Saturday or Sunday. Let's, let's just, let's just drop that mm-hmm. argument for a second. And we're going to say, let's honor the Lord with one day of the week. Absolutely. And so they take, Rather than doing their business where they could be making a lot of money, they say, no, I am not going to be working and laboring, even though I think it could benefit me financially and can benefit our family. We're trusting the Lord and God always meets their needs. You have an interesting view of when Israel was... um, was what's the word when they, when they were scattered yes in out exile. of their land mm-hmm. in exile how long were they scattered for yes yeah, so so 70 years they go into the babylonian exile right okay. god tells us in the scriptures and we see in second chronicles 36 actually he says you have not kept my sabbath years mm. you haven't kept the shemitah why he this is important to him and so he lets them know i'm kicking you out of the land Because I have made a covenant with this land, Mm. it's going to rest every seven years. Well, we know during this in this portion of time, uh, they weren't keeping the shemitah. They weren't they weren't letting the land rest. It it is. I mean, I imagine that's a real test of faith, right? Yeah. We're not going to work for a year. How are we going to feed ourselves? He says you got to trust me. They didn't for four hundred and ninety years. So then God sends them out of the land and gives the land seventy years of rest. Well, that's all of the Jubilee years wow. that they didn't they, keep. Unbelievable. Why? Because God said, this is the way it needs to be. There's a reason. Wow. So he puts them out of the land. He lets them come back by his grace. But that just gives us a picture that this idea of trusting God, choosing to rest when we could be more efficient, effective, productive, God's not impressed with our productivity. Mm -hmm. He's impressed with our obedience. I love it. And so he says, I'm telling you, this is how it has to be. Yeah. Not because he's this hard-handed God. It's because he's trying to accomplish something that brings about the salvation of the nation. So amazing. I love how the Lord is. He's a blesser when we're obedient. And there are penalties for disobedience. Interestingly, in Leviticus 26, it talks about the blessings of obedience. It's amazing. Look at verse six. It says, I will grant peace in the land so that you may lie down with no one making you tremble. I shall also eliminate harmful beasts from the land. No sword will pass through your land, but you will chase your enemies and they will fall before you. But it's like amazing. God blesses obedience so much so that you will have peace Mm 
in the land. And he calls himself in verse 13, it says, why? I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you would not be their slaves. And I broke the bars of your yoke and made you walk erect. And then it talks about disobedience. So God blesses obedience. We were talking, you were mentioning about not observing the the, um, sabbatical year, the year of Jubilee. All of these penalties for disobedience, but even in the midst of their disobedience, and I want to close our podcast with this. Listen to this. Even in the midst of Israel's disobedience, Leviticus 26, 42, it says, I will remember my covenant with Jacob. I will remember my covenant with Isaac, my covenant with Abraham as well, and I will remember the land. Mm. That in the midst of even Israel's waywardness, God never forgets the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the land. And the land. And the land. Verse 43, for the land will be abandoned by them and will make up for its Sabbaths while it's made desolate. Yet, verse 44, in spite of this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them, nor will I abhor them as to destroy them, breaking my covenant with them, for I'm the Lord your God. But I will remember for them the covenant with their ancestors whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations, that I might be their God, I might be their Lord. Even as a people, when we are disobedient, but we've given ourselves to God and our disobedience is but for a moment, we've got a God who forgives us when we don't show up at his appointments. We've got a God who says, listen, I will remember my covenant. I'm just reminded of this before we close. What was it that caused God Israel was in Egypt for 400 some odd years. Interestingly, just a little bit short of their exile, right? But they were in in Egypt for 400 and something years. And then in Exodus chapter three, God heard their cry and remembered his covenant. Listen, Israel right now is not necessarily an obedient people. Sure. But that does not nullify his promises where Israel is concerned that God has covenants and promises that are still yet to be fulfilled, all he's waiting for is for Israel to cry out yes. and recognize you are our God. In the same way that God delivered Israel out of Egypt because of their cry, so he will hear Israel's cry and he'll return. Yeah. They're gonna look on him whom they've pierced. They're gonna mourn for him as one mourns for an only begotten son. So just in the last minute or so, would you just close us in prayer? I, I just really... Yeah want to agree together that Israel is going to come to a place of crying out to the Lord and that he is going to, he's going to redeem them. Yeah. So father, we just delight ourselves in you. And we, we say, God, we, that you are good and your love endures forever. You are faithful to your word and you're faithful to your people. So God, we come into agreement with your plan. It's not our idea. It's not our plan. It's your plan. We come into agreement with your timeline. We come into agreement with your calendar. And we say, Father, that we would join in that cry. The things that break your heart, let them, let them break our hearts, God. And we do come into agreement, Lord, for Israel to yes. know you in yes. fullness. And Lord, we do ask that you'd open eyes and open hearts, remove mm-hmm. veils so that the goodness of God would be released in their midst. You would remember your covenant. They would enjoy your favor and God, they would proclaim your goodness. And we just pray these things in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today, Nathan. It's always great to have you. And thank you for tuning in once again. Next week, we begin the book of Numbers. It's gonna be amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking with us, for watching and listening. And as I say, almost every week. I would love to hear from you if these podcasts have been a blessing to you. My email is scott at togetherforisrael.org. Share these podcasts, download our app, and I look forward to seeing you next week.